Today we're going to test out that smoke collector that me and Nathan installed on the loaded Wichita by Yoder Smokers last week. Stick around. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd and this is Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. If you saw our video from last week, Nathan Munoz with Azimuth Welding Fabrication and I drew up some plans and installed a collector kit and a monster smokestack on this loaded Wichita by Yoder Smokers. A, about a three year old smoker that I bought some, well, three years ago, but it just wasn't breathing right. I was using a really small three and a half inch inner diameter smokestack that just wasn't cutting it. Now it might be fine with charcoal and really tiny little chunks of wood, but I want to use splits. I want a real, real honest to goodness fire. So more breathing was in the picture here and that's what we did. We opened it up, gouged it out, we basically took a small block Chevy and put a 671 blower on it. So what we're going to do today is the old biscuit trick or test or whatever. Now there's a ton of videos out there on the interweb about people taking biscuits, putting them on their smoker, checking for hot spots and stuff like that. I can probably cite two or three channels that have done it. There's just too many to mention. Go look for yourself. We're going to do the same thing. But before we get started, folks, as you can see by the hat, I'm an affiliate with Grillaholics, guys. They make some fantastic outdoor backyard barbecue gadgets and equipment and tools. And for a limited time, I can get you 20% off. I'm going to leave a description down the link. Go check it out. Make sure you tell them who sent you. All right, let's get started. All right, guys. Uh, as you can see, the fire is rolling pretty good here. Um, I have a little bit of bed of coals from some hard lump charcoal uh hardwood charcoal that i used um now i'm using uh, mesquite uh it's not really my preferred cooking wood um but i'm going to use that for this test really i, I don't think the uh, type of wood matters as much as uh you know getting that temperature uh, across the grates that i'm looking for i'm looking for a target of about 250 um 275 would be fine um i know it's going to fluctuate a little bit it always does uh, and so what I'm looking for is to find a happy medium here. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes since I uh, fired it up, um, starting to come up to temperature. Um, it's not a bad day. It's about a 60 degree day, foggy a little bit, a little bit overcast. Um, and what I'm using are splits that, uh, you know, some of them are a little bit bigger than the others. Uh, I'd say these are probably definitely about 12 or 13 inch splits. Some of them are smaller. There's a little bit of hickory mixed in here but mostly mesquite um right off the bat i can report to you guys that the airflow is just phenomenal and the smaller splits are burning up uh quicker than they did with that smaller stack so i may try an experiment today where i'm actually using maybe a single uh let me get my camera set up here a little bit um i may use uh, larger uh, splits and maybe just once I got a, a nice uh, bed of coals going I may just put one large log on there at a time see how that goes um, uh, but you know again I'm gonna do the biscuit experiment first uh, get that out of the way um, and then I'll report to you guys on whether multiple small splits works better or um, you know single large splits uh, but it's definitely huffing a lot better than it did which equates to better airflow but it also equates to uh, that fuel burning up a little bit quicker all right guys uh, looks like 250 right over here um, this is a little cooler on the right side probably because i just put in a water pan 10 minutes ago uh, that's my guess but uh, typically on this yoder you know, eventually the two sides even up. It's all about fire technique and stuff. Uh, found a good happy medium to prop that door open. Got a nice uh, square stack of uh, splits. Now, one word of uh, note, I guess. This mesquite is not as seasoned as I thought it would be. Um, it's a Kingsford brand. Uh, my guess is whoever they sourced this stuff from, you know, they didn't season it. I think they rushed it to market. And what we got here are 
Pillsbury uh, biscuits. Got ten of them. They're the cheapies. Got them from uh, Wally Wally World. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up here. All right, guys nothing too complicated about this i set up kind of a grid pattern um really i kind of cooked toward the left a little bit on these yoders but i'm hoping that the evenness is over to the right a little bit more than what it used to be that would basically enlarge my resulting cooking area i'm even touching out that top rack i don't use it a lot except when i got a lot of ribs to cook or something like that but i'm hoping that area will be nice and even as well but uh let's wait about 15 minutes and see how it goes. All right, guys, one little uh, update on how I'm planning on preserving this uh, bare metal from this uh, smoke collector. Uh, last week, we coated this very generously with uh, PAM cooking spray. Uh, I think it's a canola, canola oil type. Um, and I just recoated it before I, f I fired up the uh, smoker this time, um, including the stack. Um, so it's all about layering up here, letting that pit get uh, plenty hot to really start uh, baking in that non-stick surface on this thing. I did the same thing with the firebox here. Um, I do that about every second or third cook before I fire it up. I uh, spray it down with some Pam and, and uh, that tends to keep, it, uh, keep the rust at bay. Alright guys, I just wanted to provide you a visual of the uh, two stacks, how they compare. Um, you can see Right there, the obvious difference in diameter. Um, plus, you can see there where it used to come out, um, you know, compared to the collector now. And, uh, you know, let me try to get these side by side for you. Yeah, you can kind of see the difference there. I hope, hope it focuses. So, basically, there is no comparison, guys. You can see how uh, right away we should have a lot more efficiency, and we do. All right, guys, I can hardly stand the weight. Okay, it's been about a little bit more than 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. Right away, I can see that uh, that this is just uh, nice and even, guys. Look at this beautiful, beautiful golden color. Fairly even, I would say. Let's look at the bottom. Nice. Little, little darker there. Oop. Ah, sorry. So that one, nice. Right in the middle, sweet spot, nice. Oh, back here, it's getting hot. A little bit better. Whew. A little hot. Maybe I should use my, uh, get the Handy Grill Holics uh, tongs here. Nice. A little cooler on that side, but that could be because of the water pan. Nice. Not bad. Look at way over here. Not as charred. Not bad, not bad. Seems like a little hot area right here by the door. A little bit more evenness there. What do you think? Okay, not bad. A little bit doughy there still. And the one by the water pan, a little bit more doughy. Seems like a nice sweet spot right over here. And of course, the top is really even. So let's go for another five minutes. And just uh, want to show you how the fire is rolling. I've got this uh, about six inches uh, open. Uh, the damper is closed. I never open it, actually. Um, nice rolling uh, fire there. And uh, nice, uh, nice blue smoke. Not bad. Occasional, occasional wisp of uh, smoke coming out of the door. But, you know, I mean, who doesn't get that? I don't care who you think you are. These things uh, are like a living, breathing bean. They're gonna do what they wanna do. But it is rolling, it is rolling good smoke, guys. Okay, so the right side is uh, barely getting above 200 right now, uh, cause I, I'm really trying to control that left side. Uh, try to get out of the shadow here. There we go. Um, I just closed the door, but it's creeping back up to 250. Um, that's kinda area. I, I actually like 
225 to 250 uh, typically. Let me try to shadow that. There we go. All right, 250, uh, that's really a nice sweet spot. Uh, most of us should be looking for that temperature. And it's actually gone up to 225 now on the right side. Um, and I haven't put any more wood on there. I got one warming up, but it's been um, about five minutes. Let's take a look inside. Okay, guys, right side, middle, and the left side. Um, not bad. Let's look down below. This one, uh, still a little doughier, but it looks nice. It's even on both sides. Um, that one there, a little bit more darker. Same within the middle here. A little darker there. Okay, oops. And right there, a little, getting a little golden on the edge right there, facing the fire, but that's expected. And then over here by the collector, it gets a little bit more doughy again. Not as charred on the bottom. So it seems like there's a spot right here in the middle uh, that's getting a little bit more heat than the left and right. But it seems to me like the, the right side and the left side are fairly even. And then the top, let's just flip them all over and I'll just show you here. Okay, it looks like the middle, a little bit more heat, the left and right, I look a little bit more even to me. Um, so I don't know. Um, now, you guys can reference the video from last week, the tuning plate, the whatever you would call it from Yoder. I cut back to the first row of holes, leaving the first row of holes. I may go back another six inches on that. Um, that may solve the uh, slightly cooler area I seem to have right over here and maybe get it to more time to disperse uh, from middle to right before it goes into that collector. So tell me guys what you think, maybe how I should tune this, uh, leave comments below. And uh, we will see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.